Okay, let's start. So, today we'll discuss about the centroid of plane areas. So, here are the three properties of centroids. Number one, the centroid must lie on any line of symmetry of a homogeneous figure. So, if a figure has a line of symmetry or is symmetrical at a certain axis or line, then the centroid lies on that line. For example, uh, a circle. Of course, the line of symmetry is right at the center and it passes through the center of the circle. Uh, the location of centroid is here, which is located at this axis of symmetry vertically and axis of symmetry horizontally. Same with the triangle. Let's say we have this triangle. If this is an, at least an isosceles triangle, no? If this is the axis of symmetry, meaning this side is the same as this side, therefore the centroid lies within that axis of symmetry. So, yun yung ibig sabihin ng number one. For number two, if a homogeneous figure has a geometrical center, that point is the centroid. And by the way, the overarching principle in this discussion is that centroid are just geometrical center. If we are talking about plane areas, these are just the center of an area. So number three, if a figure A consists of several parts, A1, A2, A3, and the distances of their centroids from an axis S are respectively R1, R2, R3, and so on, the centroid of A lies at the distance R from S, that is the axis, given by this. So, AR, meaning this is the total area times the distance of the centroid from a reference axis or from a reference axis. That's equal to area 1 times the distance of that area, of that component area to the reference axis plus the second area times the distance of that area to the reference axis and so on. Okay. So, we'll illustrate this number 3 by this example. So, for this example, we need to locate the centroid of this figure, of this plane figure. So, wala sa ta mag-integrate. So, first, we notice that this figure consists of several areas, right? We could divide this into this area plus this area plus this area. We could also do it like this. This area, this area plus this area. And pwede rin, this area, this area, and this area. So, we have, we have several ways of dividing this into component areas. So, whatever or whichever way na this, that is more convenient to you, then it's okay. So, how about if I'll just divide this this way? Uh, this will comprise area 1. I label this area 1. And I'll cut it here. This will comprise area 2. And this will comprise area 3. So, area 1, area 2, area 3. First thing we need to do is to get the total area. Okay, so how do we compute the total area? By adding up all the component areas. So, actually, we'll just begin with the area of each component area. Okay? The total area is just equal to area 1 plus area 2 plus area 3. So, what is the total area? That is equal to area 1, which is 2 by 2, plus area 2. Area 2 is 2 by 6, right? If this is 4 and this is 2, therefore this is 2, and this is 3, this is also 3, so 2 by 6. And area 3 is just 2 by 3. So, therefore, the total area is 4 plus 12 plus 6. And that is equal to 22. 22 square units. So, if we apply this property, we could say that the total area times the distance of the geometric center to the y-axis. Let's say this. All distances along this direction are x, diba? Because this is the x-axis. So, let's say, let's just estimate that the centroid is right here. Estimation lang yan. 
So, this is now the distance of the centroid of the whole area, the total area, from the y-axis, and let's call that x bar. Okay? So, that means the total area times x bar is just equal to area 1 times the distance from the centroid of area 1 to the y-axis plus area 2 times the distance of area 2 from the y-axis plus area 3 times the distance of area 3 from the y-axis. So, ano ibig sabihin nun? Um, let me erase this. For area 1, the geometric center of area 1 is right here. Diba? So, what is the distance of that point from the x-axis? This distance. That would be 1. Right? So, for area 2, the geometric center is right here. Nasa gitna. Because this is area 2. So, this is the axis of symmetry. This is also an axis of symmetry. So, nasa dere. Okay. And that distance from the x-axis is also 1. And how about area 3? Okay. So, the distance of this from the x-axis is 3. Okay. And considering the signs, that means the total area 22 x bar is equal to area 1 which is 4 times negative 1. Pwede gamitin natin ano na lang, coordinates na lang. Ah, sige, let's use coordinates. What's the coordinates of this centroid? Negative 1. This is 3. Oh no, this is 4 and plus 1. So, that's negative 1, 5. How about this? So, coordinates na lang gamitin natin. That's 1, 3. And how about this? Coordinates of this. That's 3. 3 and 1.5. 1.5 is 3 halves. Yan. Okay. So, that means area 1, area 1 times x1. So, this will be our x1, x2, x3, y1, y2, y3. So, area 1 times x1 plus area 2 times x2 plus area 3 times x3. So, we can now solve for, <coughs> I mean x bar. So, 13 over 11 units or that is 1.1, no? Okay, let's continue. So, solving for y bar. So, the total area y times y bar is equal to area 1, y1 plus area 2, y2 plus area 3, y3. So, therefore, 22 y bar is equal to 4 times y1 is 5 plus area 2, 12 times y2 is 3 plus Area 3 is 6 times y3 is 3 halves. So, we can now solve for y bar. So, that's 65 over 22 units. Okay, we have 65 over 22 units. So, therefore, the location of the centroid, the centroid is at x bar, y bar, and the location of the centroid is at 11, on Saturday, 13 over 11, 13 over 11 units, and 65 over 22 units. That's the location of the centroid. Uh, the centroid is around 1 point something, 1.1, so 3, 2 point something. So the centroid is right around here. That is the location of the centroid.